This is a sample lesson for Idioms for Natural English by JB. And this is JB right here, Jeremiah Bork. And it is very nice to have you. So, why is this class called Natural English? Now, that's because that's what I'm trying to teach. Natural sounding English is neither too informal nor too formal so it's appropriate for the overwhelming majority of situations. It will make you sound intelligent, correct, and focused. Now, English natives mix formal and informal speech very regularly, so knowing idioms, colloquial phrases, sayings, and so forth, it's absolutely vital to true English fluency, because you need to know what people are talking about. That's the uh, stepping stone to advanced fluency in English. So a quick word about using animal idioms. Now animal related idioms can be well known or quite obscure. So I think you should stick to the better known ones even though that you should learn them all for your own comprehension. So my lesson it tries to present better known animal idioms and gradually moves towards more obscure ones. And our first example is in the phrase, birds of a feather flock together. This is a children's saying that explains the idiom, because birds of a feather are similar beings. And when applied to people, we mean that people that are very alike are birds of a feather. And for that reason, they flock together, because people who are alike tend to assemble in groups with each other. And that's a basic statement about human behavior. So it applies to people much more than animals, just using animals as an example of human behavior, like flocks, groups of birds. For our next example, we simply have fat cats. A fat cat is a person who accumulates gathers money and power for personal benefit. And before we had modern concepts of health food, exercise, and so on, being overweight often indicated power and wealth, and a chance of survival in a prolonged famine where people are starving. So if you're big, you're wealthy. But today, we simply call a fat cat someone who is rich and lazy and they don't have to actually be physically big. They just need to be rich and lazy to be a fat cat, proverbially. And here we have uh, herding cats. Now, cats are very individualistic creatures. So the whole idea of herding a group of cats is something like a joke because they aren't looking to follow each other. So it's an expression for the difficulty of getting strong individuals to do anything together. These days it's famously applied to the Senate of the United States because passing legislation through it is as difficult as herding cats. And that's the intended meaning of that idiom. Letting the cat out of the bag. Now, if you have a cat, figuratively speaking, it's a lot easier to keep the cat in the bag than it is to catch the cat once it's out of the bag. So, we use this as an expression for revealing secrets, especially unintentionally, because the cat, the secret, cannot be put back into the bag. Once the secret is revealed, it cannot become a secret once more. So once the secret is out of the bag, you can't put it back in. For this example, closing the barn doors after the horse has bolted. Now here, bolted means to escape at high speed. So a horse that has bolted has fled. Like letting the cat out of the bag, you might accomplish something by closing the barn doors before the horse bolts. But it's to say that measures to maintain a secret are useless after the secret has already been revealed. After a secret has been revealed, you can close the barn doors, but the horse, the secret, 
is gone and it's not coming back. It won't be a secret, a secret again. And now a bee in one's bonnet. A bonnet is a type of hat that was mostly used in older times. Now obviously having a bee in your hat isn't a comfortable and relaxing experience. So someone with a bee in one's bonnet is constantly distracted by something. It's usually by some sort of thought, some sort of idea in your head that you just can't stop thinking about. And here we have the birds and the bees, which is in the United States, it's an American euphemism or cliche for sexual education, usually said by parents. When a child asks awkward questions about sex, it's time for the talk about the birds and the bees, and that is nature, that is human biology and how babies come to be conceived and born. Now, modern parents may simply shorten this to the talk and you can just see the quotation marks. Americans like to do this instead of actually using the word sex when they're talking about children, but at some point they need to learn. So they have to have the talk about the birds and the bees. That's how they refer to it. And now taking the bull by the horns. And this simply means to act decisively and take control of a situation. Now, of course, grabbing the horns of a real bull is not recommended, because in a test of strength, the bull wins every time. But metaphorically, this is to neutralize the danger posed by a situation. That's taking the bull by the horns and acting decisively. And now a, a cash cow. A cash cow is a regular source of income, and metaphorically speaking, you can milk a cash cow for steady, regular cash, regular income. That's a cash cow. And now, snail mail. Now, this term came into use after email or electronic mail came into use because what snail mail refers to is what we used to simply call mail, which is letters and packages through the post office system. The term isn't usually applied to UPS, FedEx, and other courier services, but because email is instant and very, very fast, regular mail seems as slow as a snail in comparison, and that's how the term came into use. Packed like sardines. To be packed like sardines, people must be packed very tightly. So, a bus packed to its capacity, or even beyond its proper capacity, could be said to pack its human passengers like sardines. So, it's all about being packed very tight. The black sheep of the family. A black sheep is someone who is different from the others, which is the opposite of birds of a feather, and who is disliked because he or she stands out from the others. So the black sheep of a family is the least liked member of a particular family. Now this might be deserved or undeserved, but a black sheep could, for example, have a notorious reputation. Someone who brings a bad name to everybody associated with him or her. That would be a black sheep that deserves the reputation. And that ends today's sample class. Now in a real classroom online I would have a pointer that I would use for emphasis and of course I'd have students who are constantly providing feedback through a chat window and that's the system used on edufire.com and it works very well. I really like getting good questions and giving good answers back. It's very helpful for both sides. So thank you very much. My Twitter profile is at edufire.com slash jbedu jbedu which stands for JB Education. Thank you very much and have a nice day.